Our movie starts with Evelyn, who is unpacking and organizing her new apartment. At that moment, her husband, Red, sends her a message asking her to pick up their son Kane from school because he has work to do. When Evelyn arrives at the school, we see that her husband works there and is responsible for the renovation work at Kane's school. Evelyn first greets her husband and tells him that she has unpacked everything and put it in its place. She then asks him to install a door for the house's storage room. At that moment, Red's boss arrives and greets Evelyn, thanking her for helping transfer her son to the new school. Afterward, Evelyn goes to get Kane so they can leave and she finds him sitting alone in the garden being bullied by other kids. When they get in the car, Kane tells her that he hates the new school and feels that everyone there hates and bullies him. He asks her not to go back but she explains that they can't transfer him right now because of the expenses and they head home. The next day, a fortune teller named Yuria visits Evelyn. He pulls out tarot cards and reads her future, telling her that her husband's financial situation will improve. He also tells her that something new will happen in her family's life and that she needs to be cautious. At that moment, Red arrives with Kane, who is upset and tells his mother that kids are bullying him at school. He then goes to his room. Red asks Evelyn to send the fortune teller away because he doesn't like or believe in what he does. He also tells her that Kane hit some bullies and was suspended for three days. The mother is shocked and they decide to punish Kane by taking away his favorite things for two weeks to prevent him from doing it again. Kane is upset but cheers up when his mother tells him they are going on a trip to the forest the next day. The next day, Kane wakes up excited and goes to wake his parents. They then head to the forest. There, Red surprises Evelyn by telling her that he has created a simple website for her to open her online store, and now it's ready. They go for a walk and find an old door secured with many chains and a key beside it. Evelyn asks Red to take the door and install it for their storage room. Red goes to get the car and puts the door on it. The next day, Evelyn starts cleaning and painting the door, restoring it to look like new. They install it and that night after everyone goes to sleep, the door opens by itself. The following day, Evelyn wakes up, enters the storage room to get her jacket and notices an unpleasant smell, but she doesn't pay much attention and puts it on. She then goes to drop Kane off at school. Later, she goes to the supermarket for groceries, and when she reaches into her pocket for her car keys, she's shocked to find worms in her hand. She quickly takes off the jacket and assumes that Kane was responsible for it. That night, Evelyn talks to Red and tells him that Kane swore he didn't do it. When she leaves the room, she sees a terrifying figure in front of her and screams. But when she turns on the light, she realizes it's Kane who tells her he can't sleep because of nightmares and is afraid to sleep alone. Red comes to check on them, and they both go to Kane's room to reassure him that there is nothing to be afraid of. When Evelyn leaves the room, a black hand reaches out from behind the storage room door trying to grab her, but failing. The next day, the fortune teller Yuria visits again and tells Evelyn that the house is now full of spirits and someone brought them there. He warns her that she and her family are in danger and need to sell the house. He then sprinkles some things around the house, burns incense, and chants strange words. When he stands in front of the storage room door, he is shocked and asks her where she got the door from, then reads incantations over it. Before leaving, he tells her they must get rid of the door and burn it and that she should be careful about what she brings into the house. When Red returns home, he tries to remove the door, but the nails won't budge. He says it will take a whole night to remove it. Evelyn suggests they wait until the weekend to see if anything happens. The next day, Evelyn goes to the library and asks the librarian for any book on supernatural phenomena in the city. The librarian tells her about a widespread phenomenon of children disappearing in the city with none found yet and shows her news articles confirming this. Evelyn becomes anxious and tells Red about what she learned that night, expressing her fear. Red reassures her that nothing scary will happen to them. 
The next day, Red and Evelyn wake up to find that the paint on the storage room door has peeled off completely with flakes scattered on the floor. They become distressed and decide to replace the door by the end of the week. As Red goes downstairs, Evelyn cleans the house and notices a creepy-looking little girl watching her, but Evelyn doesn't pay much attention to her. Later, the girl enters the storage room, but Evelyn hears the door closing behind her. When Evelyn opens it, she finds no one inside. At that moment, she receives a message on her phone that she needs to go to Kane's school immediately. She heads there, where Red is already present, and they knew from the principal that Kane has been involved in another fight and this time, he must be expelled. They return home and decide to look for another school for Kane with lower fees. The next day, Red takes Kane to work with him and Evelyn visits another house where a child disappeared a month ago. She meets the mother and asks if she knows anything about the cursed door because she took it into her home. The mother tells her that the door is cursed and that one day her daughter Maggie went to play in the forest and saw a strange house. When she approached, a black hand appeared and pulled her inside. The mother decided to burn down the house and she says that everything burned except the door. She buried it and threw its key into the pond. However, when she returned the next day, the door had returned to its place, chained up again. Since then, no more children have disappeared. Evelyn removes the chains from the door, meaning it's now free and could hide children again. The mother urgently asks Evelyn to get rid of the door immediately. At that moment, Evelyn receives a message from Red informing her that he left Kane at home and went shopping. Evelyn gets anxious and rushes home. When Red arrives, they search the entire house but cannot find Kane. His toy? is next to the door. They call the police, but it's futile. Then Evelyn decides to consult the fortune teller for help. When he arrives, he informs her that he can hear the spirits of the other world and they can hear him too, which means he might negotiate with them to bring Cain back. But first, they must perform a ritual almost like a battle to break the protection around the door so it can be removed. Red follows his instructions. They then go to the forest with the door and the fortune teller begins the rituals drawing a circle around them with salt and instructing them not to step out of it to avoid harm. The fortune teller explains precisely what they should do and tells them to focus on the door. He speaks strange words and suddenly things start moving around them. He then brings out a statue's hand to respond to their questions. When the fortune teller asks the spirit for help, it refuses and breaks the hand. The fortune teller emerges with a tube through which he hears spirits, and they tell him that Cain is in a dark place in the other world before the tube breaks. Then, the fortune teller brings out a spirit board and places Cain's token on it. Suddenly, Cain's token moves, and the entire spirit board turns black with farewell written on it, indicating that the spirit does not want help. The fortune teller gets frustrated and throws the spirit board away, losing hope. However, Evelyn refuses to give up and draws her own spirit board with her pencil reconnecting with the spirits. They learn the spirit's name and realize it's a very dangerous entity. The fortune teller then takes out a pencil and performs ritual to determine if Cain is alive. Suddenly, the pencil moves on its own, indicating that Cain is still alive. Then, a message appears on the paper asking for help. They understand that Cain is calling out to them for help. The fortune teller communicates with the demon and asks for Cain's release in exchange for any request the demon desires. Initially refusing, the demon finally agrees and asks for the key to the door. The fortune teller places the key under the door and suddenly it's pulled in. They enter the salt circle to protect themselves and all lights suddenly go out. Evelyn feels someone touching her. When the fortune teller lights a candle, they see all the missing children around them, but they disappear quickly. The door suddenly opens and the demon tells them that he loves Cain and children and he won't harm them as long as they fulfill the request on the paper in front of them. He warns them that if they defy the request, they will be in danger, and he will take all their souls. They signed the paper and accepted the request. Cain's parents bring him back from the other world. 
The next day, Evelyn and Kane leave without Red. We learn that Red will join them after a few days to fulfill the demon's request, which is to install the door at Kane's school to make it easier for the demon to take the kids away. And that's it! If you like this recap, hit like, share and subscribe to our channel to keep seeing content like this one. If you have any requests or thoughts, drop them below in the comment section and we will see you at the next one. Peace out!